Oh, Leon, you're back too? All right. Um, well, uh, just give your reports to wh whoever professors and I'll have them go over it and then they'll send me a report. It's some stupid bureaucracy thing that has to be done. Um, you know, or lesions. There's some information that I thought you may uh, want to know. Oh, and... Uh, About plants? Um, well. <laughs> More, more of fauna than uh, flora. Um, he puts a, a, a dragon tooth on the table. Now that's something you haven't seen recently, a dragon tooth. I thought you were studying plants. It's, it's a little hard when a dragon comes out of nowhere. Um, oh, this is uh, Rousseau, uh, by the way. He's been um, helping me. Uh, he's also a lawyer. Greetings. Name's Russo Vegal Ren. Uh, seeing that there's an actual like outsider, he'll kind of stand up, like more proper, like he was kind of like hunched over his desk, and you just you'll you'll start to put two and two together based on again Rosie's reports. You'll know who these people are. Oh yes, I think I. Remember the reports about you? You're the, the lawyer, right? Yes. Oh, good. She's told you about me. <laughs> they only just found out. Uh, and it got really awkward really fast, Uncle Cedric. I'm sorry. I tried my hardest. I really did. <laughs> I see. Uh, apologies. My, my office is normally a lot more uh, tidy, but uh, recent developments uh, have Cost it to become untidy, and he'll, he'll hold out his hand. Uh, I'll shake it. Ah, you're still doing better than my abode back in Navarra. Ah, a Navarra man. Yeah, lived in uh, Cumberland most of my life. I see. I'm from Navarra myself. Ah, and then I'll just say Navarra aren't always a pleasure. He will respond. It's always nice to talk to a fellow, fellow Navarran. Um, anyway, sorry, what, what brings you all here? I'm kind of busy, especially now. What's with the map, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, well, um, the, uh, the Guardian of Fire Reborn is nearby, and we've been, uh, we've lost track of him when his parents were killed, and, uh, We've been searching for him since, but there's been no no avail. But we're starting to uh, to get uh, feelings again because we're all connected. I don't I don't know how much you know about the guardians. The way that I'm reacting is how Rosie's reacting. She's like, mm, 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 mm. Oh. <laughs> she's not saying anything. But she's like, mm. the new guardians' <laughs> parents were killed. How unfortunate. Yes, it was it was a tragedy. And we're trying to to find the boy. Uh before before bad things start happening, honestly. It depends on when his powers actually start activating and when he starts acting acting up, but I don't know. We'll we'll f I'm trying to figure things out as we go, honestly. Um, not to pry into matters, but if, for example, you did find uh, this, um, I'm guessing child, I don't know how old they'd be. Um, what if they were with parents or an orphanage? Uh, orphanage is rather straightforward. We would just adopt the child and raise him like a normal kid until he gets of age to become the proper guardian. Uh, if he was with parents, a little bit more uh, problematic in the fact that we can't just straight up adopt him. Uh, but I guess it would just depend on the circumstances. Uh, and yeah, I, it just depends. No. Well, I 
wish you the best finding him. Uh, we were mostly touching base to see what Rosie's been helping you with. And to give you the report of dragons in the area. Yes, I've, I've heard a bit about the dragons. Um, I wasn't expecting you to, <laughs> to fight them. I thought you were going to be studying plants, but... Me too. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, now that you're back, are you have you finished your studies? Are you back I'm, to join the circle? I'm planning to go back out, uh, but I thought the circle would do well to with this information, especially uh, to help um, keep the people safe. Right. Um, very honorable. Uh, perhaps maybe talk to some of your professors and Tell them about what you've learned in your field research. And, uh, you know, when you're fully done, you can write up the report and we'll go through all that mess. Okay. I hope not to be uh, here too long as uh, the leaves are about to change season. And I'd like to be able to be out in the forest by then and uh, capture all the information I require for my thesis. Mm. Are you traveling with these people? Yes, I found it to be a little safer, um, especially with, you know, dragons on the loose. Right. And now that I'm thinking about it, your report, he points to Rosie, mentioned the case in Navarra that you were a part of, right? Yes, um, I had gone there to research some dragons, especially because, um, if I'm going to be out in the world with dragons, then it's best to be armed with knowledge. And I just so happened to be able to help where I could. I thought yeah, you were... oh. rather unfortunate that Radonis got in the way, but it is what it is. Radonis, you say? Uh, we didn't meet him face to face. We found his den. It was very scary. <laughs> Archon and everything. Yes, he's someone not to be trifled with. Um, but I thought you were sticking mostly to the forests, going into town every once in a while. Now you're getting mixed up in politics? Well, I believe you me, um, politics is not my arena, and I had hoped not to be in politics, but um, they're good friends, and I had hoped to you know, not get into too much trouble with dragons. Uh, relax. He had a very minimal role in the case. He mostly just went to the archives and helped me organize to get ready. All right. But are you planning on going after more of these dragons? Um, maybe. Depends on... Well, they do have a symbiotic relationship with the forest and the plants around them. It would be interesting to be able to study them, um, well, from a safe distance and maybe uh, dissect a few. Mm. We might need to push forward your uh, request for a Templar guide then. I don't feel comfortable with you just going after dragons. Have you uh, seen my lawyer friend over here? He gestures to the hammer. He's uh, very strong. Yes. I always appreciate the flattery, and yes, this was given to me by Queen Antona, but he's not alone. We're looking out for him. And I am too, Uncle. I I've been pretty useful as well. And we we've been looking after each other. And I'd hate to take away resources. It seems like things are <laughs> very busy around here. Right. And I appreciate you do look like a very strong man, of course. Um, I do appreciate you looking out after this mage, but uh, he definitely needs a Templar guy. <laughs> um, because while you are, you know, I'm sure very handy in a fight and could protect him, from physical threats, the stress of fighting a dragon can wane on a person and emotion 
keeping calm is kind of key. And I would just rather someone watch over him. For you, of course. I'm just going to lean into Leon Zero. I was like, we're, we're kind of done here. <laughs> like, he's, he's got you up against the wall. You either like do your power thing or it's it's, it's over. Um, <laughs> Don't do your power thing. <laughs> I, uh... Not, like, me. Just like, show him, like, ah, we're chosen. I, uh... I do, I do appreciate your concern, and if there is really no way to not, well, I don't want to sound like I don't want the extra help. Extra help is always nice, but I'd rather not take resources away from you. But if I could choose my Templar, if if I must have one, I think I, that could be arranged. It depends on their availability, of course. Of course. Um, who, who would that be? Um, I was hoping for Nazim. Uh, we have known each other for quite a while, and I believe that she would do best with, um, well, the circumstances we will be in. Mm. I agree. Um, if Nazim accepts, then... By all means. So, more about these dragons. How many have you seen, and how many have you fought? The total is currently up to six, though the first five were very, very young. I see. Well, hopefully, ah, uh, who, who am I kidding? Uh, you're probably going to run into a lot more, judging by the looks of your equipment. You'll be more than capable of handling yourself. Oh, and we do have a report of a dragon, um, you know, the big dragon we uh, encountered. Yeah, out on the bluff about 800 yards outside of town. <laughs> it's just right outside of town? Uh, <laughs> stop there momentarily. He's a biggin, and, um, <laughs> well. It looked like a high dragon, Uncle Zedric. We couldn't really, uh, do anything about him yet, it, yet. <laughs> All right. Well, luckily, Andrea just got here, so, um, Are I don't gonna know. Are go a dragon? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Hey, don't skip, don't kill steal from us. We're just leveling up, okay? <laughs> um, it would be useful research if, um, well, when you go to handle um, the issue, if we could tag along. I was actually going to suggest that you guys all look like very party people. Well, Sorry, Leon, but uh, the rest <laughs> of you are very party people. Um, we could definitely use the backup. Uh, Templars, as Leon has mentioned, it's, it's been rather uh, limited, our resources. So it could be best if many of them stay here. But if you want help taking down this high dragon, as you say, I'm sure Andrea and myself could aid. Good to know. Uh, Leon, would you mind taking this to the rest of the group? I like one moment here in private. Oh, yes. Um, uh, uh, he looks over at Rosie and looks back to Russo. He, he um, says, hey, Rosie, let's go find the others. Also, I need to, well, find Nazim. <laughs> oh, boy. So you guys will leave to allow Rousseau and Cedric alone with each other. I'm going to say that as you guys are heading out, um, you open the door, and uh, Sir Garrison is on the other side. He had his hand up. He was about to knock on said door. And he looks down at um, Leon and says, 
Ah, so you have arrived, Mr. Faust. Yes. Were you checking up on me? I was going to inform Night Vigilant that you are going to be returning, but it looks like he's already aware. Don't let me interrupt, Night Vigilant, he says to Cedric. Sir Garrison does. Mm. Please forgive me for this um, statement, but though I am appreciative of you taking note of my actions, uh, I did not believe that the Night Vigilant required updates on my every move. Well, my understanding is you are a special case, Mr. Faust. We don't normally send 18-year-olds out by their lonesome on researches, so... I have made it a point for me to keep a close eye on you. And though I appreciate you taking your job very seriously, I too take my job seriously and have been quite apt in reporting my findings and whereabouts. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Night Vigil, I did want to speak to you as well. Um, I guess once you're done with your guest, he says, looking at Rousseau. Uh, We shouldn't be too, too long. (laughs) It won't take too long. I just wanted to inform you that uh, Night Captain Trevelyan wanted to let you know that my current, uh, I have been relieved of my current charge and am ready to take on any new uh, charges as you see fit. Uh, I'm available and ready, sir. Ah, excellent. I might have a task for you later. Um, I will come find you shortly. I just need to get a a report in. Excellent, he says. And he looks down at uh, Leon again with a little bit of a, mm, like, sneer. Um, Leon's going to give Russo the um, please help (laughs) advice. Please. Just go find uh, Pasha, then you should be able to find Nazim from there. Please, oh, please yes, help. yes. Please help, please help. So <laughs> you guys leave. Uh, so now it's Russo and Cedric together. Ooh, that boy is a handful. Are you talking about Leon? Yeah. Uh, how so? He seemed to uh, excel in his studies while he was here. Has he caused you some kind of problem? Oh, no, 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 no. Leon's a very charming young man. It's just his time in the circles made him very um, inept at uh, feeling out social situations and really pushing himself. So he's got some way to go there. That is very interesting. Normally, many of the the magi here are very adept at that because when or lay and you have to play the game um there's different fraternities that are playing the games right now it's quite a headache as being a navar and coming here it took a lot of getting used to i i can really see it i mean when i got into law i had no idea how much politics and law were gonna have to go hand in hand i I know you, I don't have to explain you being the night vigilant and all how much you just get intertwined into every country's dealing. Uh, yes, it is. It, it is definitely not what I thought I was signing up for, but uh, here we are. So I'm just going to skip the chit chat because I know you're very busy, Mr. Ashwood. Rosie's told you pretty much most everything about us, correct? For the most part, yes. I mean, I'm sure there's probably some details that she's forgotten, but I'm assuming she's told me most of the major things. All right. um, So you know about death and... Oh, yes, the the dark's pond. How how long have they been awake? Um, I would just, uh, without having a report in front of me, I would say at least 10 years, if not a little bit more. Is, 
see the only one on the surface? Um, for the most part, I think they do send a few uh, people up to the surface, but just just for scouting purposes to make sure that they're the deep roads entrances are clear. Uh, they mainly stay in the deep roads and clear out deep roads. Yeah. Well, kind of surprised you only had him watched and not brought back to you. Mm. Well, I do have a lot of my plate, and uh, he did get a good uh, recommendation from a friend. So I just figured watching him would be better. It's it's hard for me to get used to it. Mm. Did you have a bad experience with Darkspawn before? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I did. I was uh, in Kirkwall. I see. I apologize. Uh, I've done the best that I can, and heck, it was 17 years ago. There's no point crying over it at this point. Hmm. But you've done well for yourself. Uh, I've been a law speaker for four years now, and uh, let's just say my employees in the air. Oh? Uh, ousting Radonis made it too dangerous to stay in Navarra, especially considering he was embedded with uh, a royal family. Uh, God, what was their name? The, the Markhams. Ah. Radonis in Navarra. Yes, that's I think you've mentioned that a few times, and every time it's still disturbing. Um, perhaps my wife will be able to assist with that. Yeah, that I have no doubt. I just wanted to make sure that me and you don't need to be hostile in any way, and I've come to trust Aerithum. Okay. Um, I don't want to be hostile with you either. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't understand why I would be hostile with you. Well, I mean, obviously not too many people know about this, so I figured it might be a concern. It's best to be open with one another. Ah. Well, I think after just listening to you talk about it, I pretty sure you understand the gravity of the situation and you won't just go into a tavern and start telling everybody so mm -hmm. well I uh, won't take up any more of your day I it's a pleasure and I really hope you find that fifth guardian ah same uh, first apparently I have to find a high dragon yeah, I'm not really looking forward to that, but is what it is. <laughs> well, why not? It could be fun. Yes. I'm used to fighting apostates and blood mages. What's <laughs> like <laughs> changing it up a little bit could uh could uh help me. Uh, well, I'm just not very eager to uh get into a tussle these days. I'm not very weathered like I was. Hmm. Well, don't worry. If you don't wish to go, you don't have to. But if you do go, I'll make sure you make it back. Good. Because uh, I've got more to go back to than I ever thought I would. Oh, anyway. Wife? Uh, no, uh, I, I adopted. Oh, I see. Well, I will definitely make sure you get back to your children. I have children of my own, so... We both have that on the line. Good to know. And I'm just going to hold my hand out to shake. Of course. You will meet your hand. Cedric, 
Roll me a magic roll, please. A magic roll. 17. Oh my. Okay. Um, you go and shake Russo's hand. When your hands come in contact with each other, you suddenly feel this like flush over you. And something causes this, as soon as you make contact with Rousseau, your mark definitely flares up more. And during that flare up, you can feel, it's almost as if, that's strange. It's almost as if Halisair is in this room right now. Like you can somehow feel Halisair's presence through this man, through Rousseau's like body somehow. And it only lasts for like a moment, but it clearly is there. Uh, so yeah, as he meets it, he'll kind of, he'll wince at it because he's not used to it. Ugh. Are you okay? Sorry, it's, it's a guardian thing. The, the person is close. Uh, Very close. Well, Rosie probably told you the whole chakra thing. I guess it must have been a bad interaction. Mm. Perhaps. Perhaps. Uh, sorry, I, I I must get ready for hunting a dragon. Good to know. All right. I'll uh, see you around, Cedric, and I'm just going to very briskly walk out the door. Pasha, you, you are technically you're with Nathan and I think just Nathan, right? Yeah. yeah at this Nathan. point, because Darren went with them. So was there anything in particular you're trying to do? I don't know if you were actively trying to do something to look for signs of dandelion, because I think that's why you're here. So yeah. I'm not sure if you're trying to do that. I think, I think if anything, Pasha might just be like, I'm in a circle. Let's have a look around because... Like, until the Templars tell me you're not meant to be here. Like, she's like, this, how, how do the mages outside of you live? This is an experience. That's fine. Um, uh, go ahead and do an investigation. Roll me an investigation. I think Nathan's just going to follow you. 17. Nice. Ooh, okay. Nice. So I'm going to say that, Pasha, you're, you're wandering around. And just for convenience sake, nobody stops you yet, at least. So you and Nathan are wandering around. Um, and actually, we'll say that um, we'll say that one of the one of the uh, teachers or professors like just stops you and says, "Excuse me, can I help you?" And then they will say, uh, "Are you by any chance His Highness Prince Nathan Sunworth?" And Prince Nathan says, uh, "Why yes. Yes, I am. I'm here." Um, representing His Highness from Ferelden, and my associate and I are just, um, just looking around uh, the White Spire. And uh, she says, oh, is there something that I can help you with? Like, can I, uh, is there, some, is there like a specific part of the White Spire that you'd like me to take you to? Um, Pasha, the Nathan <laughs> Um, Pasha is, oh god, I know where Pasha would want to go, she'd be like, where do the Tranquils stay? She'd ask to go and see them. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the professor says, oh, um, that's a very peculiar, that's a very interesting request, but I, I'm, I can send you, I can certainly send you there if you like. Uh, here, I'll take you, I'll take you, um, I'll take you, and so, um, yeah, they, they, they can take you to the, to the, to the tranquil dormitory, I guess, the hall where the tranquils have their quarters, um, and I, I'm going to say that, uh, you'll probably pass by a, a specific room that's open, and you actually see one of the tranquil, um, seems to be in front of an easel and is currently painting some sort of uh, landscape painting. Rel relatively good-looking young man with a white stripe down his bangs. Uh, Pasha would, 
Like, I think she'd like, you know, like just out the corner of her eye. And then she kind of, she, she goes back to see and she's just kind of lurking in the doorway watching this man because from from her perspective, this would be impossible for someone under Sarkomek. So she's smiling in a kind of, look how much free will they have kind of way. So she's just like watching him painting from the from the doorway. The gentleman towards her direction and he says, uh, hello, may I help you? And he does have that tranquil mark on his forehead. Uh, she, um, her eyes kind of noticeably linger on it for like a second, not in like a malicious way, more in a kind of like, oh, like, like, a, oh, there's the brand kind of thing. And um, I think she, she says, to be honest, I wasn't sure if you were tranquil or not. Well, I am in the tranquil ward, am I not? It was more the fact that you were painting. Ah, he says, this was something that I was very much into prior to my tranquil state. Um, it's some, this is a specific landscape that I remember from memory that I thought I would try to copy. Uh, Pasha kind of, she gestures like, may I come in? Would you rather me stay here? She kind of makes a... Of course. He then turns towards Nathan's direction. If I, my memory doesn't fail me, Prince Nathan Sunworth, and uh, this, his prince bows and says, yes, um, and you are, sir. You can just call me Hugh. Hugh, that sounds very familiar, Prince Nathan says. Uh, he says, I am very much associated with the Night Vigilant, uh, Sir Ashwood. Oh, I see, Prince Nathan says. Pasha, Pasha's going to walk up to him and she's looking at the landscape. Is this a landscape, Pasha? Like, does she recognize it or is it kind of like... I think the landscape seems to be that of uh, somewhere in Navarra, actually. And it actually is is a I shouldn't say landscape it's like a townscape and it, he's actually painting the the what appears to be a corner of the city of Navarra that had the the final repose in that you stayed at mm. but it's not the same building it's like it's the same location but it's as if this was a building from way back when from a long time ago out of character it's the same in that that uh, Hugh had first run into and met Cedric back in the day. It's that same inn, which is the inn that eventually became the final repose that you guys were at. Mm. So I, I think Pasha kind of squints and she kind of says, this is, this is Navara, yes? You have a very good eye. Yes, indeed. This actually is the same building where I met my best friend, and thus my life changed forever. It it was a little different when we were there. That's uh, called the final repose now. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. I have not been in, in Navarra in a very long time. Pasha, by the way. Pleased to meet you, Pasha. Again, Hugh, please. <laughs> Do you have an appreciation for art? Art is... Art is a fine thing. I, I am no artist. I could not do such a thing. But it's, it shows a lot of mastery of the self. My, my people value that. Yes. Indeed. It is, I'm sure, a, a great skill to appreciate regardless of how well you can do it. Hmm. And I, I think she's just admiring his picture. And I think she, like she, on one hand, her face is very, this, this is a beautiful piece, you know, a beautiful piece of art. At the same time, there's like, there are questions and I don't want to be rude. So she's kind of trying to very carefully 
formulate these things. And um, I think kind of half out of the corner of her eye, she um, says to Hugh, you decided to paint this? You were not told to do this? He, he nods. Yes. I guess you could say that I am an unusual tranquil, not like the others. Can I, can I ask why you are not quite like the, the others I have seen here? Uh, Hugh actually gives you a crooked smile, which is interesting because normally they don't smile normally. So that's a little odd. And he says, I'm afraid that is a very, very long story. Um, one that I unfortunately don't think I have the full time to regale you with. But just know that I am, due to some very strange circumstances, I am how you would call halfway between tranquility and not tranquility. Hmm. And how does that affect you? Honestly, it's wonderful and disorienting at the same time. Part of me defaults to the simplicity and the contentment of a tranquil. I think that is what allows me to be as observant and analytical about situations and quite frankly level-headed. But then there's the other part of me, which I guess you could refer to as the humanity part of me that is exhilarating, exciting, makes you feel free, almost like you are flying, soaring through the air with the wind through your hair. I don't know if you've ever experienced anything like that before. I, I can safely say that I have. It is beautiful but terrifying at the same time. Yes? That's exactly what I'm referring to. The freedom is exhilarating but also frightening because I sometimes wonder if I should keep such feelings of freedom in check, lest that I, I end up doing something that is, goes beyond my personal sense of morals or values, if we're to say, which I suppose is a weird thing for somebody who is tranquil to say. At any rate, it's something that I have been struggling with and my friends especially Cedric has tried to help me cope with this very strange back and forth almost paradoxical way of thinking mm. I have learned a lot through the years you see Miss Pasha and a lot of things that have challenged and conflicted the ways that I have seen the world especially from before and I believe that I've grown to be a much better, smarter person for seeking out these truths, at least my own personal truth, and no, one, no other's personal truth. Hmm. You are shackled, but the shackles prevent you from falling, and yet, inevitably, the shackles begin to... constrict. Exactly. You seem to be either very empathetic or somehow you know firsthand what I've been going through. <laughs> I, I don't think anyone would call me overly empathetic. <laughs> I think that's one of the least, the, one of the last things that my friends would, uh, would call me. No, I, uh, I, I am Kunari. I see. I have learned a little bit about the Kirnari over the years. What brings you here to the White Spire with His Highness? Ah, uh, well, it's, it's a very odd story, actually. I don't know if it would be as odd as yours, but I, I think I can condense it. Uh, and Nathan, was so kind as to accompany me out of Saharon when unfortunately dragons we got stranded and then we took up with a circus it was it was strange 
he like, like studies you carefully. Ah, wait a minute. You are the ones that saved the people of Antiva during the attack at the circus. Yes. How did you know about that? Uh, he pauses for a moment. I have um, found out through uh, your friend, Rosie. Ah, Rosie. She mentioned, I think, I believe she mentioned that she was sending letters to her father, but... Ah. I have very close connections with the Guardians. Ah. Tyrion is with you as well, correct? Uh, yes, yes, he is. And he is doing what, and he himself has been enjoying his new life? I believe so. You... I think she's kind of, she's pausing and... Oh. What do you know about Tyrion, Mr. Hugh? Nathan says. Yeah. Not very much. Let's just say that uh, I was very hopeful of his escape. Hmm. Basha will nod, because obviously she doesn't know how Tyrion escaped, but just, it's like a nod, but like, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> he says, well, I don't know if I can help you with the dragons, but perhaps I can help you a little bit indirectly, and maybe Tyrion might be able to recognize such things. He's actually going to go over to um, a desk of some sort, and he's going to draw open a door drawer, and he's going to pull out um, a parcel, and... He is going to hand them to you. He says, these parcels contain what I guess you could call paint grenades. Simply hold one in your hand. Think of some relatively simple object, any object. It could even be a hole in the wall or a door. Toss said paint grenade at that location and at least temporarily what you imagine will form and take shape. There are currently three in there, so hopefully you can find creative ways for them and use them wisely. My goodness. Thank you. Thank you, Hugh. You're very welcome. I think she kind of, um, she like, she like puts them down on a table and she, um, well, you, you can't just give me a gift without me giving you something in return. Uh, and she She'll start digging through her bag of stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I like to imagine like the cake was what she was eating at the time, but she probably bought like, um, she would have brought some cookies in like, you know, nice, you know, nice like wrapped, like there are maybe like three of them they're wrapped with a bow and that kind of thing. So she'll take those, those out and hand them to him and be like, in exchange. He takes them and says, Thank you, he says. Um, I do enjoy a good cookie. Uh, and if you don't mind, I know some children that may be interested them in as well. I have a feeling Arabella and Amaya might like some. The honey and lemon. Divine. Beautiful. I look forward to trying them. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hugh. And she picks up the package. And, um... I, I think she's going to take another look at the painting, just give it like an appreciative, mm, like, it is good. <laughs> retreat backwards. With some goodies, the those hue bombs are very fun. <laughs> are yeah. really fun. Uh, so yeah. have fun with uh, You've got paint grenades. A uh, real uh, painter's touch. I was glaring at the whole time the camera when you mentioned it. I was like, oh, you son of a... <laughs> <laughs> As you are um, leaving the, the, the tranquil quarters, I'm going to say that you guys are going to be passing by um, some of the Templars' quarters as well. And as Nathan... Nathan is actually like mentioning so okay i think i remember stories about that guy hugh that mr ashwood always hangs out with they say that he's got this really cool magical ability where he, he first of all the man i think fights with a giant paintbrush second of all he can actually paint 
objects paint objects from thin air, which I think is kind of what those grenades do. Well, that, my goodness. My, the things magic can do. <laughs> Pasha, I thought that you weren't really a big fan of magic. I'm actually quite scared now that you put it in these words. What am I holding in my hands? Um... I mean, you're not casting magic with them. They just are en magically enchanted objects. But you're not casting magic. They're, they're like the, the lights that we light the street with at night. They're fine. They're in a package that makes them safe, I think. I I'd like to think so. She very hurriedly like, puts them in her bag like, okay, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <Be safe. laughs> <laughs> and as you are passing by uh, the the knights, uh, sorry, the Templars' quarters, one of them again, oh, because for plot reasons, one of their doors is open, and you uh, catch eye on, you can see the desk from the open door, and on this desk appears to be a a small portrait, like like somebody's has a small tiny portrait on their desk, of a. First of all, a woman in a uh, Templar's outfit and a young man uh, who is not in a Templar's outfit but is in a guardsman's outfit. And you immediately zone in on the eyes. And then you zone in on like the nose and the face of the nose and then the facial structure and you're like, Dandelion? Pasha walks in. Pasha walks in. <laughs> I don't care who's on this. It's mine now. Right. Nathan's not even, like, didn't notice right away because, you know, he's just talking and all of a sudden you just go into another open door. Um, and you walk into the room. Nobody seems to be in the room at the moment. Whoever is in just casually left the door open for the time being. Um, and, uh, yeah, what uh, what are you doing in this room? She she goes straight to that portrait and picks it up, and it's looking at this like she's she's looking at this and she's kind of doing that thing of like is it is it it looks very much like it could be, I mean the person's older but it could be something in your gut is telling you, hmm could it could it be she, she's gonna go out to it she's taking the picture with her. She's she's taking it and she's Nathan. What? Nathan. Yes, what is did you just steal that that picture from one of the Templars' rooms? It's only theft if it's noticed. What? And, <laughs> come back. Have you seen this person? This person's a Templar. Have you seen them? Me personally? He's he's looking at it. I don't think so. D d isn't there like a nameplate or something on the desk? That's a good idea. And she goes back in. Okay. And she's just searching for stuff very hurriedly. Like, who, who am I looking at? Whose place is this? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you basically are, are, are looking through, uh, th through the desk and you notice the nameplate of the owner of this desk is... Sir Buford Garrison. Okay. Sir Buford Garrison. I can't take notes because my pen is out of ink. <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> um, Knight Lieutenant Buford Garrison, yes. Knight Lieutenant. And, and Nathan, how high ranking is a Knight Lieutenant? Uh, relatively high. I would say, I think, if I remember correctly, two or three ranks above initiate. Okay. Mm -hmm. She'll. I think that's him right there, and he oh, says, pointing at. There's another. There's another portrait. You gave me a minor heart attack there, Pasha. Like when he says over there, Pasha looks at the door like, oh god. No, no, it's a portrait. No, it's a portrait of him. Looks like he's getting his his like uh, Templar like initiation or something. Oh wait a minute, that's the man that we saw at the very uh, beginning of coming into Orlay, he seemed to be giving Leon some trouble. Yes, the man on the horse. Yes. Um, 
I, I, we, I need to find him. And she, she's looking at this picture like she wants to take it with her. Sure, you she, can. I mean, but she, she puts it back. She's like very begrudgingly, like it's not mine. <laughs> and she puts it back, and just like backs out of the room, even though it has very obviously been searched because she's right. yes. after herself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And Nathan, we need to find this man. Uh, all right, I can probably flag somebody and ask uh, where they could find Sir Garrison. Thank you. Uh, well, just follow me, and he'll follow you. <laughs> Meanwhile, let me get back to Andrea. So, Andrea, you've you've dropped off the children. I'm going to say that Andrea, you are. Where would you go after you drop off the children? An outdoor eatery. Sure. We can be at like uh, getting crepes. <laughs> you're you're going to go at the at the outdoor eatery getting crepes, probably for your for your children. And uh, I'm going to say that uh, you will see an individual also in line getting crepes uh, in front of you, um, who looks like that person. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Um, she turns around, glances at you, gives you like a little devil take, and, and then she smiles. Hello. Hello, dear. She says, you look, you look familiar. She looks you up and down. Yes, I, th I think we may have met once or twice. Uh, purchase something for me, maybe? Perhaps. Oh, of course. Forgive me, she says as she sees the bracer. Um, yes, Andrea, the guardian of water, as well as uh, the stormbringer of Tevinter, I think. In my youth. <laughs> <laughs> how, um, how have you been doing? I've been doing very well. Uh, how have you been doing? Oh, well, I, I've been doing quite well. Uh, I actually, I recently joined up with the Antivan Circus. You don't say. I, I keep meeting people who have been involved in the circus. Oh, well, there's quite a few of us here, dear. Yeah. Um, any in particular that you know of by name? I just met a few. Um, there was Tyrin, Tamazrin, Derethen, oh. I believe. Oh, yes, yes, Tyrion and Darth. Yes, of course. Funny that you ran into them as well. Yes, it is indeed funny. <laughs> so uh, have you uh, come, have you seen anything interesting at the circus? I heard that there was all sorts of excitement. Oh, lots of very extremely interesting things. She says very interesting things. Um, I'm sure that you are burning with curiosity merchant narika says i am burning with curiosity at present in fact i very warm at present oh well hopefully you will get even warmer very soon maybe you should go check the circus out actually i think that would be very important for you that is good to know um do you believe that my burning curiosity would be sated if I go there? I think so. Um, you know, I remember, by the way, not to change the subject, that I know you have lovely, lovely daughters, but have you ever thought about maybe having a boy? Um, probably a yay, uh, six years of age or something? <sighs> well, I, I have indeed... Um, Sometimes when I dream of him, I'm thinking brown hair and freckles. Oh, I think brown hair would be very, very, very nice, actually. Well, you know, if you can't have another child of your own, you could always adopt one. There yeah. are lawyers that can help you with adopting a son just like that, six years old. Yes. Six years. You know, that is the perfect age. It's right between my girls. Hmm. Well, I, I didn't know if there was anything else that um, 
that might help satiate your burning curiosity? No, I think that that's, that's uh, the thing that I am most interested in. It sounds like I must go to the circus. I think you should, she says. <laughs> well, it's so good to, to meet you again, um, Miss Andrea. Speaking of which. Yes. Have you heard of um, an old friend of yours in, uh, in Navarra at present? Navarra. Well, I know I, a lot of old friends, she says, and she's like sort of pulling at her chin. I like remember this. this one had you tied up for a really long time in uh, conversation. He left you hanging around. <laughs> you know, actually, now that you mention it, I was very surprised to find out about a, this possible friend that could have been lurking around Navarra. And she's sort of like like rubbing her chin, almost I, like as if she had a goatee right now. Uh, I, if I were you, I'd keep an eye out because I heard that old friend is sporting a new style, new sense of, new set of clothing, the Navarin style. I appreciate you telling me that. Thank you. Very much so. Hmm. Well, like I said, fancy running into you here, Andrea. Maybe we'll run into each other again sometime. Hopefully soon. <laughs> oh, and by the way, uh, my condolences again. I, I heard the news about about Bostwick. I'm so sorry. It's, it's all right. It's been a while now. Thank you. Um, hopefully he's in a better place now. I'm sure he is. Have a nice day, my dear. Uh, Miss Stormbringer, your crepes are ready. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Extra powdered sugar, just like always. Yes, and strawberries with a little one. <laughs> of course. It's on me, by the way. Thank you. Tell your husband thank you very much for... Um, for helping out with my cousin's wedding the other day. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and she, she's going to uh, eyeball Narika once more and be like, I, I believe my husband and I are going to the circus. <laughs> oh. We'll have fun, she says. I'm sure that uh, Master Ignaldo would love to see the Ashwoods there. Mm, fantastic. And then she uh, carries her crepes away. And I think what was it? Leon wanted to interact so I could bump into him. Sure. Yeah, you can bump into Leon. Yes, go right ahead. So you're just making your way over to, I guess, see Cedric, because apparently we're going to take the kids to the circus today. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll run into, I guess, Leon by himself? Yes, no? Other With other people? Uh, Leon's trying to uh, psych himself up to go talk to um, Nazim. Ah, uh, I see. So we'll say this is in the White Spire. So you're, you're, so um, Andrea's back in the White Spire to go f find Cedric, you're looking for Nazim, and you both kind of run into each other. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Holding oh. oh. A little bit oh. of powdered sugar might get onto your like sleeve. A little bit of powdered Apologies, sugar. Apologies, and she'll like use her bracer and like wash it off real quick. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. That's, that's a neat trick you got there. Yeah. Oh, luckily, we're in a place where I can just use magic and not get in trouble. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I, I feel you there. Um, I, I'm sorry about earlier with uh, Pasha, my party member. I know she gets very um, motivated when it comes to her people. P Pasha? Oh, yes. Um, when we were out shopping, uh, uh, she's a Tamazrin. Oh, Tamazrin. Yes, okay. Um, all right. She, she goes by name. That's interesting. Uh, it makes it much easier to um, talk to her, especially uh, when we're, you know, palling around. I, I suppose it makes it less likely that you get her confused with another Tamazarin. <laughs> 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 no, yes, you are, you are correct there. Oh, um, oh, well, I have you. Um, I know that you're, you're really good with gathering information. Um, I was wondering, um, at some point, I'd like to learn that sort of ability, you know, to 
gather information. Um, I don't know if you have any books or uh, people I could talk to about that. Do you mean do you mean research or do you mean from other people? Well, from other people, you know how you had Rosie and um, oh, uh, by the way that you handled the situation so um, cleanly, it feels like you've been doing similar things. Oh, you're very book learned, aren't you? Yeah, yes, and I, I'd like to be able to, to interact with people a little bit more naturally. Yep. Normally, normally I wouldn't say books are the best way to learn how to interact with people. It's usually better <laughs> interacting with people. <laughs> uh, I, okay, okay, I'll give you, I'll, oh man, yeah, I'll give you that one. You're adorable. Um, <laughs> she's like, she's like um, however, if you if you're looking at why why do you are you just trying to get information in general, or are you trying looking for a specific contact? Um, I think it would be useful to the party um, to you know be able to gather this sort of information, especially if we're going to be fighting dragons. Uh, sometimes the biggest dragons we can encounter are other people, <laughs> especially when we were up against the Archon. It would have been nice to be able to know a little bit more. What we were you, were <laughs> you went up against the Archon? What? <laughs> not, not directly, no. Who? Oh, no way. Um, but as you know, we, well, probably from uh, Rosie, we encountered him in Navarra um, and found his, well, hideout. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather not face him one on one. <laughs> Would you mind telling me where that is? <laughs> oh, I was under the impression Rosie knew more. Oh, dear. See, now I'm still in the beans. No, this, this is important. If you should tell me. <laughs> like, she'll start writing it down. Oh dear. Um, and then he sort of tells you a little bit more. But in exchange, could I... Um... Here's the thing. I can't give you skills of socialization, but I could give you contacts if you were looking for something specific. Yes, that would, that would be lovely. Especially, I mean, um, I've read in some books that some uh, rogues go into uh, seedy taverns and then, and then say, uh, are you the king of hearts? And they say, uh, the jack is the wild, and then and then they they exchange information and and and, and pay each other in, in bets. I mean, that does happen. You do have like poker games that aren't poker games and such, but I know that's not usually how it's done. Um, I have had conversations with people that are heavily encoded, but usually it's just using uh, analogies and such with someone you know who where do you where are you going what what sort of contact do you need because i could actually give you um, some i think we're headed towards ferelden uh, just to research some stuff down there but uh, do you happen to know anyone down there <laughs> i know the king but he and i are not the best of friends uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you're traveling with the prince surely that helps yes uh, but i mean Yes, he's he's very helpful, and um, I mean, I've got more time to talk with him about these things, but I expect uh, I won't have this as good of opportunity to talk to the guardian of water here. No, oh, you're you're flattering. Uh, <laughs> she's like, all right. Well, Ferelden's not really my my point of contact, but what I can do, and she'll uh, like. She's still thinking about the, the burning sensation on her back and everything, but she pulls open like a notebook and she's like scrawling out um, a letter and she'll roll it up and she's going to say, this here is for Theobin, but in order to get it to Theobin, you're going to want to go through his contact, which is in Ferelden. Uh, and then she's going to write something else out <laughs> <laughs> and she's going to say, and this one is for King Kine. Oh. Why, why, thank you uh, if, so much. If you are going to find yourself in the deep roads anytime soon, which happens, I would use that. 
that letter right there. Um, oh, okay. So uh, just for my notes, um, who specifically uh, did I grab contacts for so I can? Um, an assistant for Theobin. Okay. Yep. And then, and then uh, King Kind. King Kind. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm get right to the top. <laughs> so, so if you go down there, you will have a very nice contact. You seem very honest and sweet. Um, <laughs> she was, I, I try to be. If you ever have word for me, you can go to a tavern. And if there is a person there who is wearing a feather hanging, a feather clasp you can go to them and give them a letter and tell them to bring it uh to where the storm rages oh okay it will come to me and if you need any information on the local area i will send out word to all of my little birds that they can give you some information Oh man, thank you so much. This means quite a lot, um, especially when going to a new city. Um, it's good to be able to see what's been going on. That will help. Um, they are the local, yeah, they are my little birds, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, yeah, just, and she'll give you a, a ring and she says, you keep Rosie safe. Yes, yes, of course. I am holding you to that. Do you understand? Yes. <laughs> Here's so what you're saying is she wants you to stay very close to Rosie oh, as much oh. as possible. <laughs> and you know, she gave you a ring. <laughs> I, guess Leon, I guess the Leon ship is, is in a docks at the moment. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Choo-choo. Rip Leon. <laughs> Leo, see, oh, he, he, he could be. Oh, really? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll give you a ring. It's just a, it'd be gold with like a sapphire to match my bracer. And she's going to say, show that to someone who, as I said, is wearing a feather pin in a tavern, and they will know that I sent you. They can give you local information, they can help you out. Man, well, thank you. I I don't know what to say, but it sounds like um, you'll be expecting some information, though, from me. I would appreciate some information, especially since you seem to be doing something very important. I'd like to know what's going on. Um, but I don't want you to feel obligated to doing anything beyond keeping Rosie safe. That's my niece. And... Uh, if anything were to happen to her, I would take it very personally. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> veiled threat. <laughs> it wasn't I'm... super veiled. <laughs> between the lines. I mean, yeah, yes, yes, of course. Um, yeah. I mean, she's a merchant after all. She must also have her own context. <laughs> she does. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sure she does, but not these ones. These ones are mine, and uh, they know they know most things. And I expect, well, as they are your contacts, you'll know what I'm inquiring about. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. Thank you a lot, and this this does mean a lot. I hope it helps. I do. Uh, it seems like you are uh, up to something important, like I said. <laughs> I hope so. It sort of was thrust on us, but I guess I guess you know everything about that. <laughs> I have a bit of experience with being thrown into these things myself, so. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. Um, feel free to use those contacts. Like you said, though, they will be keeping tabs on you, obviously. Obviously, well. yes. And uh, don't be super afraid of just putting yourself out there when it comes to 
discussing things with people. Uh, yes. I, I, I've got to learn how to lie, though. <laughs> You have, you have an honest face. It's not a bad thing. It's uh, something you could use here to your advantage. Um, people will trust what you're saying based solely on your face as long as your voice doesn't give it away. Okay. I'll work <laughs> on that. Yeah. You'll do well. And use honesty to make your lies better. <laughs> yeah, that, that does make sense, especially because <laughs> people will... Look for the contradictions. Callista, I'm going to say, maybe ask to Nazareth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I guess with all those children, that, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and she's, she was just raised in the queue and she knows how to, she knows how to do what needs to be done. Okay. Well, thank right. you. I don't want to keep Good. you too much. That's all right. Good luck to you. And to you as well. I don't expect you'll need it. We'll see. <laughs> Sounds like there's a dragon nearby from what I'm hearing. So. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Pasha, um, you are with Nathan and you're trying to find out where Sir Garrison is. Yeah, so I feel like Cedric would have leaned towards uh, Nazim at, at first. But then, you know, like he would have gone down to talk to her. And then, like, it would have, like, been, like, that opportune moment where she's training the recruits, and she's like, oh, you guys have so much more work to do. Like, you're not even, you're not where you need to be, and blah, blah, blah. And you would have been like, okay, uh, uh, Mr. Garrison, Sir Garrison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, no. <laughs> so I'm going to say that you are with Sir Garrison talking about about Leon, and I'm going to say that, that um when the prince asks for where they might find Sir Garrison, several of the Templars or mages will say, oh, I think I saw him going up to uh, to the Night Vigil's office. And so you guys, if you want to go up there, Pasha, you can knock or burst through the door. I don't know what you do, but <laughs> I think I think Nathan will insist on knocking first. But Pasha will wait for Nathan to knock and then she'll open the door. It's like, we knocked. I'll say that leading up to the knock, Sir Garrison is going to say, so, Miss uh, Night Vigilant, you are want me to go and keep an eye on Mr. Faust. <sighs> keep an eye on is a strong sentiment. It's not so much keep an eye on him. It's more or less make sure he doesn't get himself killed because he's fighting dragons now. <laughs> oh, Yes, we wouldn't want the poor boy to get hurt, now would we? Of course not. We took an oath. Yes, of course, sir. Very well. If you believe that I am the right man for the job, I am available and willing. Well, of course, you wouldn't be at your position if I didn't think you were the right man. Uh, just keep me updated on their ongoings, because... Out of character, we need another mole. Uh, <laughs> care, yeah. But this one's a more obvious one. Uh, <laughs> right, guys, thanks, real yeah. thanks. Uh, just keep an eye on Leon and make sure he remembers his, his training to remain calm and collected and all of that. I'm sure you'll do great. And, in, you know, of course, make sure he doesn't die. <laughs> yes. Understood. I thank you again for thinking of me with this honor, Night Vigilant. Of course. Um, so just bi-weekly updates and... It's a knock on your door. Opens. And then it opens. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Asha walks in. And she actually... she. Like, she looks, sees Cedric, but then, like, kind of ignores him. And she um, she, she just goes up to Sir Garrison and says, Excuse me, sir, I need to have a word with you. Um, I, but yes, I'm sorry. I don't think we've ever met, miss. Uh, we haven't. You had a picture on your desk? You are at my. You are in my quarters. I can see it from the door. It's fine. 
uh, uh, my my apologies, sir. Uh, the prince says, but your door was was wide open, and we just happened to see the photo right there on your desk from the hallway. Yes. Very well. What about it? Uh, the the young man in the in the picture with you. Who who was that? That's a comrade of myself and Nazim Trevelyan. Sir Lento, he says. Out of character, Sir Lento, the Grey Warden that was the Grey Warden that was with the Guardians in the Deep Roads during the reunion session. My baby. <laughs> yeah. You you know Sir Lento is actually a Grey Warden. The same Grey Warden that discovered the dragon that had awakened. The old god that awakened. Tasha. Once I calm down, um, uh, she, she looks very confused. Uh, Lento, so uh, I. Daniel, Daniel Lento. I, I, are you sure his name wasn't Dandelion? I don't believe so. I, he's. Mm. I don't believe so. She, she starts pacing around the office. Just. I, he- Pasha, it could be that he might have changed his name. I mean, if he got a new citizenship and decided to start a new life somewhere outside of Tevinter, he might have changed his name. Dandelion Daniel Lento? It, it fits. It fits. And he looks like Dandelion. Oh, oh it, is he a Templar? Uh, no, he was actually a guardsman here, but he recently was uh, conscripted. I believe, uh, by, um, what was his name? Sir Kuzland? Sir Kuzland constricted him into the Grey Wardens? So, so you're telling me he isn't here? He's in a different city. My princess is in a different castle. <laughs> I, I don't believe he's here right now. Though, though I think the last person that he spoke to was with Nazim. Sir Trevelyan. I think in Q-Lap, Pasha just yells, Damn it! <laughs> and she, she looks like she's gonna punch a wall, and then I think Propriety takes over and she's like, This isn't my wall. Pasha, this is good news, though. We're very, very close. You punched close. the wrong wall. I punched that wall over there. That would have been better, but... If, if you have a specific punching wall, direct me to it. I will... Yes, it's that one. <laughs> now I have to get this one repaired. <laughs> punching the wall because it helps. I think she gives it like three solid punches. If if I may, Madam uh, Sir Garrison says, if 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 it helps you, um, as opposed to punching a wall, I believe Sir Trevelyan is in the training grounds right now, training some recruits. Thank you. That would be very helpful. I'm sorry for punching your wall, the wrong wall. It's okay. Have a nice day. We'll just <laughs> get just... someone to repair it. It's no big deal. <laughs> Prince Nathan says, my apologies, Night Vigilant. Uh, we will be leaving you. Of course. Uh, I don't know who you are, but uh, have a... the, yeah, so you'll I so don't you'll recognize leave. him, right? You, you probably older, don't right? recognize him. Yeah, yeah, you probably don't recognize him. <laughs> I see so many people today that it's yeah, like... No, 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 no. Um, Thank you, Initiate. No, no. <laughs> so, yeah, so Pasha, you will go down to the training grounds and, yes, you will see uh, Nazim Trevelyan with the recruits, with the new Initiates, rather. And, uh, and I'll say that they're taking a break, so you can easily approach her right now since they're taking a break. I was going to say, if they weren't taking a break, Pasha's approaching anyway. Go ahead. She will, she will see you and she'll say, uh, Yes, madam, may I help you? Uh, you you knew a, a young man, a uh, Daniel Len- Lento. Yes. I, she's looked very surprised. Do you know him? I, yes, yes, I believe I do. I'm, I'm looking for him. I've been looking for him for a very long time. Uh, oh, um, well, yes. Uh, Miss Daniel and I were, were actually good friends, and um, 
he actually was conscripted recently by the Grey Wardens. Do you know where they sent him? Well, he's stationed in Weissaupt. However, he actually dropped by fairly recently, I would say a week or so ago. Uh, he dropped by because he was passing through. Um, I believe he said that he was currently headed to um, the Deep Roads to meet up with the Guardian of, of Earth and the Guardian of Aether. Thank you. That is that is very helpful. Would you mind if I had at it with one of your training dummies? I'm sorry. I'm very upset right now. I, of course. Go right Thank ahead. You. Thank you. And she she's just beating up this training dummy. I'd like to think she looks skillful. Like she's not just like ah, like like she's like doing moves, but like yes. Like, like, I don't want to look like I'm lame, but I'm so angry. <laughs> <laughs>